Welcome everyone to the first episode in 2018 of Unrooted Women's Basketball Edition. And my guest for the first show this season is none other than assistant coach on the women's basketball team here at Menlo College, Kelsey Steinhagen. Kelsey, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brian. You're very welcome. Let's start by talking a little bit about yourself. Now, you have one season of professional basketball under your belt. You played in Melbourne, Australia, part of the WNBL. Tell me about that experience and did it help push you towards coaching at all? Um, it was obviously a really awesome experience. Um, you know, not many people get the opportunity to do that. So when it came my way, um, kind of just said, got to do it, uh, once in a lifetime kind of thing. Uh, it was really, really cool to be able to play, um, obviously at that high of a level and be surrounded by players that are that passionate and that good at the game as well. Um, and obviously living and being able to travel in Australia is, yeah, once in a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> How different was it to get accustomed to living abroad? Uh, well, of all the places to live, Australia is not too bad. True. Speaking English, True. right? True, yeah. Uh, you know, could have went to Lithuania or somewhere like yeah. that. Um, but definitely learning to drive on the other side of the road was a challenge. Oh my gosh. Yep, they kind of just got me a car and were like, hey, here you go. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and did you ever almost mess up? There were definitely a couple close calls, but um, managed to make it the whole season without ever having any incidents of note. So Perfect. that's good. Perfect. <laughs> now, you mentioned how it's something that not a lot of people get the opportunity to do. Not a lot of people also get the honor of being inducted into the Hall of Fame of their alma mater, which happened to you this past year at the University of Wisconsin Stout. Uh, what did that mean to you and how did the whole ceremony go down? Um, definitely very special. Um, you know, the, the group and the team that I played with when I was there, you know, we we're obviously really successful and we're still really, really close. So it was like a big reunion of sorts. Um, pretty much all my former teammates were there, coaches, everything, um, all my family. So it was a really fun, uh, fun get together. Um, I can't make it back very often for alumni games and stuff because of also coaching. Mm -hmm. So it was just really awesome to be able to see even like, you know, our president from when I was there was there wow. and, you know, athletic director that was there. So um, just a really cool thing. Um, obviously very special. And, you know, I'm so thankful that I was able to be there and do that. All right. Let's talk about your current Menlo squad a little bit. Now, last year's team went all the way to the quarterfinals in the NAI National Tournament for the first time in program history. How difficult is it to keep this team hungry for more while also dealing with the natural roster turnover that you get from year to year? Um, well, I think that uh, it hasn't been hard to keep our girls motivated. You know, they weren't able to obtain all their goals that they set for themselves last year. So our returners coming back have that in their mind. You know, um, their goal last year was to win the GSAC and to win the national tournament. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, still things that they're, they're we're striving for as a program. Um, and I think that they've set the bar really high this year for our new kids. And our new kids um, have caught on really quick to the culture, and um, they're just really excited to be able to be a part and be able to contribute to help us get there. And early on here in 2018, the Oaks have played a couple of games against a pair of NCAA Division II schools who are usually on the schedule. Uh, how important are these types of games for building up to conference play? Uh, yeah, I mean, our preseason um, on our non-conference games is really important. As you know, the GSAC is super competitive. Yeah. Um, you know, we started, what, five teams ranked in the preseason top 25 mm -hmm. this year again. So um, the more we can prepare ourselves ahead of time and get to playing at our best level to get into conference, you know, the better that's going to help us. Um, you know, we have a really tough non-conference this year. Um, <laughs> a lot of ranked teams yeah. outside of that also on the schedule. So, um, you know, by the time we get to conference, I think we're, we're going to be playing at the level we need to be at. Yeah, in particular, that December stretch where we have a couple of tournaments <laughs> and then the beginning of conference play, you have seven out of nine games yeah. during that stretch against ranked teams teams. Yep, it's we're, definitely going to be a fun December. We're going to know a lot about the Oaks when <laughs> December rolls around, that's, yeah, for sure. that's for sure. Now, early on this year, it seems like the Oaks might have one of the deepest rosters that I personally have ever seen here at Menlo College. What can you say about the depth that this team possesses? Um, you know, we have a lot of really great returners, and our class that we brought in a freshman this year um, are also have a lot of potential. Um, we We've been very fortunate, um, you know, that everyone's been able to get some playing time in these early games, which definitely helps confidence going into the year. Um, and it's, you know, it's also really nice to, when you're looking down the bench, for someone to sub, like, you're confident in every single player mm -hmm. that you have and you're excited for them to go out there. Um, I think all the girls bring kind of different things to the table. So it's nice to be able to have different stuff to bring off the bench as far as, like, you know, game scenarios and things like that. 
And when you're making five player line changes during a game with regular consistency, you know the team is pretty deep. And that's been the case for you ladies so far this year. Now, obviously, a return to the national tournament is an overarching goal for the for this year's team. But what needs to happen for the Oaks to have another deep run at a postseason shot? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that a team chemistry is super important. And I think that's one of the reasons we were really successful last year. Um, and so far this year, I think we're off to a great start with that. Our girls are all super close, um, almost like sisters, sometimes maybe annoyingly too close. <laughs> um, but they, you know, especially with women's basketball, that's a really key component is that chemistry. Um, and I think all of our freshmen have assimilated really well to the culture and the style of play. Um, and I, I really think that the sky's the limit with this group, so I'm excited. Yep. All right, Kelsey, let's get into the final segment of the show. It's called Brownie Bites. I'm going to ask you three off-the-wall questions. Give me your best <laughs> answers. And I know you're going to like these three questions. Question number one, which player is most likely to own a Harley? <laughs> um, so that's a very interesting question. <laughs> um, I kind of have two people in mind. So um, the first one is Mira. Okay. Um, and maybe that's just because I know her dad owns one. Okay. Or a motorcycle of some variety. Yeah. So I could see her also like being into that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then my second choice um, is Destiny. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, I don't know. She just likes to have her uh, tough persona, shall, okay. shall we say. And, um, you know, she's got all the tattoos to go along yeah. with it. I could see her rolling through downtown sack on a Harley. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to explain why I decided to ask about owning a Harley? Yes. Well, we need to explain this? Yes. Okay. So when Kelsey was getting inducted into the UW Stout Hall of Fame, <laughs> <laughs> I received a picture from their sports information director. I asked for a couple of pictures from Kelsey's playing days. And I got a picture of her, which I'm going to throw it up on the screen. It's a picture of her posing with, I believe, another teammate. Yes. And you're on a Harley. And your teammate, I know, had a leather jacket on. I don't yes. think you did in this no, picture. No, I was fortunate enough to not get that. Or chaps. How on earth did this come about? Um, well, our head coach always thought he had really sweet ideas for posters. <laughs> uh, there were some other very interesting ones as well. Fortunately, they're before my time. Um, but yeah, he had some friends that rode motorcycles and he thought it might be a fun change up. <laughs> I mean, you were mean mugging it pretty hard in the picture. Yeah, I'm so. not good at mean mugging. Yeah. So, <laughs> Well, you gave it a pretty great effort. I'll well, say that. <laughs> All right, question number two. So we're piggybacking off of that. Yep. Then how many of your players own leather jackets and who would look the best in one? Can't say I know offhand specifically if anyone does. Okay. I've never seen one wear anyone wear one. Um, but if I were to venture a guess, I would say um, maybe Aaliyah Brantley. Okay. She, but more not like a Harley Davidson type leather jacket, mm -hmm. more like a fashionable leather jacket. I can yeah. see her wearing. She's more of our fashionista. Yeah. Yeah. But if you did throw her on a motorcycle in a similar style picture, oh, I could see that good. because she does have that yes. intense look at times. She's got a great mean mug. She does. Yes. So I wouldn't want to cross paths <laughs> with her no. when she's on that motorcycle. <laughs> uh, and question number three, which player is most likely to indulge in a variety of Wisconsin cheeses? <laughs> um, I think I would have to go with uh, Salome from okay. France. Um, they're very passionate about their food and cheeses in France as well. So I think Salome would enjoy sampling some Wisconsin ones. As a side note, did you see recently the Milwaukee Bucks fan who named like 27 cheeses in 30 seconds? I am not surprised by that at all. I, I, I honestly <laughs> thought it was you. The, the, the woman's <laughs> voice sounded exactly like you. That's awesome. And she was just rattling them off on the spot and got 27 and 30. You're like trying to beat the Bucks player who guessed however good. many. And yeah, 27. How many did the Bucks player get? I, that I don't know. The, the clip is just the 30 seconds That's and awesome. the woman just going crazy. <laughs> but I, I think I can't imagine the guy got more than like seven. They're probably not, because he's probably not from Wisconsin. Exactly, probably not. <laughs> Kelsey, thanks for joining me on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome, folks. The women's basketball team, they're playing at home this weekend in an exhibition as they take on Cal Miramar at six o'clock inside Haynes Prim Pavilion. It's free to get in. We're not charging for tickets, so come on out. If you can't make it out, the game will be streamed live on the Menlo College Sports Network. And then Tuesday night, the Oaks take on Pacific Union College. That one set for a 6 o'clock tip-off. Again, that one is at home. We invite you to tune into next week's episode of Unrooted Women's Basketball Edition when Kelsey Steinhagen will select the first interviewee by me, Brian Brownfield, right here on the show. Until then, we'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. <laughs>